G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Today I am talking about one of Australia's unique species, the brush-tailed rock wallaby. Brush-tailed rock wallabies are one species of about 13 and they cover some of the most rugged and beautiful but harshest environments in Australia. And as the name suggests, they live on rocks. They take refuge on the rocks from predators like dingoes. The dingoes can hunt them out on the grassy flats, but not up in the rocks. And rock wallabies are superbly adapted to bounce on rocks. Now, some of their physical features, and let's start from their feet. Now, they're part of the macropod family, and macropod means large-footed. So the rock wallaby, like all kangaroos and wallabies, has quite large feet. But rock wallabies uniquely on the underside of their pad, their foot pad, it's much thicker than most kangaroos. And it's really used to be able to grip those rocks. Also, protect against the rocks, they're very sharp. And if we walked on those rocks barefoot for half a day, you'd have blistered and bleeding feet, but not rock wallabies. Now, you might also notice that their tail is extraordinarily long and it's used for counterbalance. So they can sit there and rest back on it and use it as a, a tripod, but more so when they bound those incredible distances from rock to rock, the tail balances the body. That's why it's so long. Same goes for tree kangaroos. Now, if we move up along the body, you'll see there's still camouflage. It blends in with mottled browns, greys over the entire body, black stripes, and all of that is called disruptive camouflage. Now it blends them into their environment, but with that different coloration, it actually quite disrupts the solid mass of a wallaby and blends it into its background. Now we come up to the head. Um, the mouth is quite small, they eat vegetation, but its eyes it has great eyesight, really good vision, really good hearing. They breathe through their nose with a reasonable sense of smell. Have a guess what rock wallabies use for shelter. Caves, rock crevices, fallen trees that leave little nooks and crannies. Their life support system is those rocks. Now it can protect and provide shelter for them from the rain, from the heat, and from predators. They use rocky nooks and crannies and deep little gullies and caves. Brush-tailed rock wallabies live along the Great Dividing Range in Eastern Australia. Now, they were found from just up in Queensland, through New South Wales and down into Victoria. But the species has suffered radically in the last couple of hundred years. When Europeans came to Australia, they brought with them the feral fox. And the feral fox has been annihilating brush-tailed rock wallaby populations ever since. The fox is a different predator to the dingo. It can climb better on rocks, it's more cunning. It doesn't hunt in a pack, it's a solitary uh, predator. And it's given the wallabies a really hard time. Now, the next thing is those terrible fires that we saw in Eastern Australia at the beginning of this year. They burnt over 80% of brush-tailed rock wallaby habitat. Now, you go back 200 years, there were hundreds of thousands of brush-tailed rock wallabies. Now, there's down somewhere in the low tens of thousands. Now, 10,000 might still sound like a big number. The scary part is the rate at which their population is collapsing and you face an extinction event. Now, in the southern parts of Australia and Victoria, those populations are nearly extinct. The central population of brush-tailed rock wallabies is really endangered, and the northern population is doing a little better. Um, and once you get up into that northern population, the rocks are really rugged. Uh, in the tropics, although it's not quite tropical there, the fox doesn't like the heat, so there's not as many foxes. But as a species, they're quite endangered. Now, almost every rock wallaby species in Australia, and there's over 10, are facing extinction. They are a really vulnerable species. Go back a thousand years, the predators they had to deal with were Tasmanian devils. They're not very fast. And tiger quolls, which are another carnivorous marsupial. And they're not really fast. So the wallabies aren't used to facing threats like the feral fox. They need all the help they can get. And the, the brush-tailed rock wallaby is one of our flagship species at Aussie Ark. It used to be found in our area of the Barrington Tops. And there are still some scattered populations, but it's our job to breed as many as we can and get them into our sanctuaries and let them call a place they once did home again. Now, rock wallabies live in colonies. So you'll get an area of suitable habitat. And the habitat is generally, they live on the rocks, but there's no food on the rocks. 
So they've actually got to come down at night into the gullies or the grassy plains so they can eat the leaves off figs or berries or grasses. But they live in small colonies. Now you'll have a male that'll have a territory and normally there's only one male. And he'll have three or four juvenile, uh, three or four females and their joeys or little juveniles. And that's a small colony. But really common, you'll have a little colony here or a little group here, a little group here, and a little group here. And that forms the colony. Brush-tailed rock wallabies are marsupials. So after a really short pregnancy of only just over 30 days, it's really short, they give birth to something the size of a jelly bean and it crawls into the pouch where it lives. But one of the other vulnerable things that rock wallabies face is because they're great mums. So when the little wallaby is too big for the pouch, but it's really vulnerable at that age, mum will actually leave the joey up on the rocks and mum will go down and feed and get a big drink of water. And you know, in some of the hotter environments, mum actually comes up and dribbles water into the joey's mouth. But while mum's not with the joey, it's got no protection. And that's when the foxes take advantage. Okay, couple of bits of homework. Rock wallabies vary in size. I want you to tell me the smallest species of rock wallaby. Okay, there's only one, the smallest species of rock wallaby. And now for a different one, let's say, can you find out which rock wallaby lives around Alice Springs in the Northern Territory? And for your third bit, if you'd like, and you're not sick of doing it, please draw me a brush-tailed rock wallaby and put it up on the rocks. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. Uh, this is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.